new batteries in the off-grid shed. Twice the power, twice the fun. Let's get started. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while since I've done a video. I've been pretty busy at work, uh, wrapping up the school year. And uh, in the meantime, I've done a lot of projects and I thought I would share with you the new lithium iron phosphate batteries I purchased about a month ago. They've been installed for two or three weeks now. Kind of want to give you a run through of things, show you what I did and uh, show you the new power and everything that's happening. All right, so here's the second set of batteries. Eight 3.2 volt Nomino lithium iron phosphate L batteries, EEL, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Eels? But uh, working out great, the 230 amp hours, uh, just like my top rack, which I installed back in November 22. I did also go ahead and install a Victron Smart Shunt. I've had this for a while. But whenever you have multiple battery banks, you definitely want to go off you know, a smart shunt like this uh, because uh, you just be a little more accurate for you know, what the total charge is when it's summed from two battery banks and so forth. The other major thing that happened along with getting uh, another set of batteries is I went ahead and installed a variable speed pool pump. And that has been the X factor here because that pump is really energy efficient. It's just working out great. It's basically using less than half the energy with the same results for getting the pool clean. So I'll have a separate video coming out on that pretty soon, installing that variable speed pool pump. Plus when you start it up, it's basically got a soft start built in. So it's not hammering my inverter like my old one horsepower pump was doing. Let me uh, turn it off and turn it on. Right now it's running at 2600 RPMs, but let's turn it off and I'll turn it on and show you what it does here. It's a nice soft start, check this out. Just powers up so gently. He's running good now, buddy. <laughs> So I'm up to 12 kilowatt hours in power. That's plenty now, especially with that new efficient pool pump. And that's what the whole purpose of the uh, system was, essentially to power the pool. I did want to mention one other thing. I had a video that came out several months ago where I thought there was an issue with the MPP solar. I wasn't getting all the power coming in from the solar. And I have to say it was user error. Error, error, error. So I just didn't have the, uh, the charge and float settings correct on the inverter. Now, I believe I go up to uh, my, I bulk charge to 28 volts and I think I flow at 27.9. And that seems to be enough to get the inverter to really kick in and to get the maximum power coming out of the solar panels on the roof of the shed. Before I was only charging up to like 27.2 and really need to push it up to 28 volts. Let's go back and I'll show you uh, some of the unboxing and building out the BMS along with uh, bringing the batteries over, installing them and so forth. Just a little bit of a of playback over the last couple of weeks. So here's the completed setup. Get the BMS out. Custom printed Green Mountain DIY guy. BMS stand holder right there. I have a um, display for the BMS. You can see we put 9.9 .9 amps in, 26.7 volts. That's where the voltage is at right now. Nice little meter right there. Power supply, 9.91 amps. And got all the wiring done for the BMS to the battery. Have all the uh, balancing leads going can see and then negative out from the battery through the BMS then out here positive from power supply and then my negative from the power supply um, to this connection right here past the BMS and that completes the circuit for charging so we're gonna charge this up to uh, full capacity probably gonna go up to 29.2 and then Probably do a discharge test. Want to make sure I have 230 amp hours here of batteries. Probably have a little bit more. All right, I just did a battery discharge test. So let's see where we ended up. Looks like we're just at six kilowatts, 235 amp hours, 
and we're stopping at 23.5 volts. So six kilowatt hours, 235 amp hours. All right, so I think we could probably get 240 amp hours out of here, but I'm not gonna push it. I'm not pushing it. We know these are really good cells. We're very happy with uh, how they're performing. Attractive. All right, guys, I just went ahead and finished setting up the new batteries, which are on the middle rack of the battery cabinet. So I have my batteries from last fall. Again, these are 230 amp hours, 230 amp hours, and space for more batteries in the future in case I want to add another set. I can also go back further in my rack. I have space to add a whole another set. So I can do quite a few batteries in this cabinet, insulated cabinet. These batteries, they connect back to Anderson power poles, come out of the rack to more Anderson power poles, and then over to my battery switches. Three sets for one, two, and potentially three, and then to my bus bars and up to my rest of the system and so forth. Moving forward, I just need to go ahead and make sure the voltage between the two battery packs were the same. The top one was at 26.9, then my new batteries were at 28.4 volts. By connecting both batteries into the same bus bars, this allows the batteries to equalize or become the same voltage. I believe this took a couple days, if not a week. Lastly, I made sure each JK BMS was working properly, set up, and ready to go. All right, guys, I'm going to finish up the video now. You can see the new battery bank along with smart shunt. Got the variable speed pool pump. Uh, really nice system when it's all put together, uh, efficient, and uh, working really well. So thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Come on back for more videos. Take care. Have a great day.